People who suffer strokes often don't recognize that the signs they're experiencing during a stroke signify brain damage, so they don't get to treatment in time. This is a tragedy because although there has been effective medication available for nearly two decades, most people don't get to treatment in time to access the, that medication. They have to arrive in the emergency room just within the first few hours after signs begin. They often live with a lifetime of disability that might have been avoided if they recognized the emergency that was a stroke and got to treatment in time. For today's session, there are three objectives. The first objective is that you recognize the signs of a stroke. So after today's lesson, it's important that you be able to recognize the signs of a stroke. The second objective is that when you do recognize the signs of a stroke, you are confident in the immediate need to call 911. That's the second objective, that you call 911 as soon as you spot a stroke. And the third goal for today is that you will teach this information forward. No one on the planet has ever done CPR on themselves. No person has ever administered cardiac um, compressions when they're in cardiac arrest. So very few people end up calling 911 for themselves when they're suffering a stroke. So it's important that you teach this knowledge forward. Let's begin by looking at some obvious emergencies. No reasonable person would walk past that businessman unconscious on the floor with the phone in his hand and say, let's, um, let's let him sleep it off for a few hours. No reasonable person would have that, that thought. No reasonable person would look at the choking man giving us that universal sign of choking with his hands up against his neck and say, uh, I, think, I think you should call your doctor for an appointment sometime tomorrow. No reasonable person would have that thought. And no reasonable person would look at the school bus crash and think I'm gonna drive by this and check on it tomorrow. But with strokes, because they're not as obvious or clear dramatic emergencies, reasonable well-meaning people often have each one of those thoughts. They'll think, well, maybe that person needs to sleep it off or call the doctor for an appointment tomorrow or we'll just check on this another time. Those are thoughts that people have with strokes. But because strokes are every bit as emergency-like and as serious as these images that you're looking at, we need to act immediately when we spot the signs of stroke. So contrast these obvious emergencies with what you're going to see in the next image. The next image is a video without sound of a man displaying what could be stroke signs. But with the video that we're going to see, it's not a clear, obvious, dramatic emergency but it's important to recognize that the emergency this man could be suffering is every bit as serious as what you're seeing here. So here we go. This man is showing us one of the possible signs of brain damage that may accompany a stroke. He's suddenly unable to speak, although he's trying. There's no obvious reason why he can't get words out. Contrast this man's relatively clear calm demeanor. His skin tone looks good. It doesn't look like he's having trouble breathing with the more obvious dramatic emergencies we saw. With strokes, one of the signs that some people experience is an inability to form words. It can be a very calm thing. The person just can't get words out. But if it's a stroke, it's every bit as serious. A sudden onset inability to speak is a stroke sign and requires immediate action. Strokes are the number one cause of long-term disability, and they are a leading cause of death. Strokes are also quite common. One in six of us will suffer a stroke. Strokes can happen to anyone at any age, but our odds do increase when we turn 65. More and more, we are seeing younger people have strokes, and we're seeing the incidence of strokes just increase across the board. Every four minutes, someone dies of a stroke, and every 40 seconds, someone suffers a stroke. The American Heart Association recently put out a documentary following four teenage girls, all of whom suffered a stroke. So it's important to realize that strokes do not just affect older people, they can affect anyone at any age. And let's start with understanding what a stroke is. One of the most common ways a stroke occurs is from a blood clot to an artery. Our brains are super sugar hungry, oxygen hungry organs. They're constantly bathed in a flow of blood. The blood is carrying with it oxygen and nutrients that's constantly feeding our brains. 
when one of those arteries gets clogged, think of a, a kitchen sink a clog in your pipes of your, of your kitchen sink. As soon as one of those arteries gets clogged, immediately the brain tissue that was being nourished by that artery starts to die. So a stroke at its most fundamental definition is blood flow interruption to the brain. That's what a stroke is. It's blood flow interruption to the brain. And as soon as that blood flow stops, the brain begins to die. This animation shows us what a normal blood vessel carrying the blood should look like. So those little red blood cells are flowing freely. You can actually feel your brain being nourished by blood flow by taking two fingers and putting them on one side of your neck. You can feel your pulse on that one side of your neck. And what you're feeling is the blood flow going up to your brain. But with a stroke, sometimes what happens is that artery gets clogged, that blood vessel gets clogged. And over time, the flow of blood begins to slow to a stop. And as soon as that blood flow stops, the minute, the second it stops, the brain tissue begins to die. The brain tissue doesn't have reserve. As soon as the blood flow stops, brain death begins. That the brain tissue death begins. The reason strokes can be so tricky to, to diagnose or even to recognize is because of the way our brains are divided up. Different parts of our brain control different parts of, of our bodies and the way we function. So for example, the back of our brain is called the occipital lobe. You don't, you don't have to know that. That's not important. The important thing is to take away that different parts of the brain control different functions. So the back of your brain tends to control the vision centers. So if a blood flow, if blood flow is interrupted somewhere in the back of your brain, you may have vision changes. You may have a sudden onset of blurry vision or suddenly you're seeing double or suddenly you're blind in one or both eyes or suddenly your whole field of vision changes color and everything might have a rusty color or a blue color, just depending on even where in the, in the back of our brain the blood flow is being interrupted. But a, a blood flow interruption in the back of the brain can have vision signs that can signify a stroke. Whereas if we have a blood flow interruption in the, the cerebellum, the base of our brain, our balance may be affected. So suddenly we're unable to walk across the room without falling over because we're dizzy. We have these balance issues. All of a sudden we have balance problems. That could be a stroke in the cerebellum. If you have a stroke in the temporal or frontal lobe, for example, you might suddenly have trouble understanding speech or even forming speech. So if the frontal lobe, uh, you might have trouble forming words. So slurred speech or even the inability to connect a thought with a word. So you're unable to talk. I've had stroke patients before who are talking to me in gibberish and um, they, they don't make any sense, but they think they're making sense again because they're suffering brain damage. So the patient who's having these problems in some cases doesn't even recognize that they are having these problems. One of the main signs that we see is facial drooping, facial weakness, and, and one-sided body weakness. Again, this is one of the main signs. It's only, depending on the study you read, it's about 60% of patients will present with one of these two signs, this facial drooping or body weakness. Um, these patients have all been asked to smile, and you can see that one side of their face is droopy. They're unable to control those muscles on the one side of the face, so they're their mouth is kind of droopy and even the eye above that droopy mouth you can see is also droopy. But this is not every person's experience. So with this woman, we see very clear signs of facial drooping. And she's, if you see this, think stroke and call 911. But not every person who's having a stroke will, will look like this. But many people do. This is one of the more common signs of a stroke. The other very common sign of a stroke is one-sided body weakness. So as a paramedic, one of the things I will do when I suspect my patients might be suffering a stroke is I'll have them sit down and close their eyes and I'll hold both of their hands out in front of them. And I'll tell them that I'm going to let go of your hands and I want you to keep your hands upright, keep them up at the same level. So I'll let go. And sometimes with a stroke patient, you'll see one arm drift down. Sometimes the patient doesn't even recognize that their arm is drifting down. I'll say to them, keep that arm up, keep that arm up. And they'll say, I am, I am. And, and sometimes they're just not. These are the, the, some of the most common signs. About 60-ish percent of strokes will present with this one-sided body weakness, or it can even be double-sided body weakness, um, or the facial drooping. 
but not all strokes will present like that. So when you, when you get into the high 90s, 90% 90 is, of strokes will present with one of these kind of signs. The stroke signs are sudden and they're unexplained. So going back to the body weakness and the arm weakness, I think many people have had um, taken a nap during the day or in the evening you wake up and your arm, one, one arm is um, tingly and numb and not quite working right because you slept on it. You slept on it funny, but as the seconds tick by that arm is getting better and, and feeling and mobility are returning to it. So that's not a stroke. But one-sided weakness would come on suddenly with no explanation. Just all of a sudden you can't use your one side of your body or even both sides. The stroke can affect both sides at the same time. So sudden onset body weakness. Um, we talked about the loss of balance and dizziness. There was a senator from New Mexico, January 26th of 2022, suffered a stroke, Senator Ray Lujan of New Mexico. And his primary symptom was a sudden onset balance issues. And he did what I think most normal, reasonable people would do when this happened. He took a nap. He laid down to see if it would go away. And that's the wrong thing to do, which is why we're having this training today. I want you to recognize that sudden onset balance problems think it could be a stroke, not to take a nap and see if it'll go away. If there's no obvious reason for it. Think stroke. We talked about the vision changes, sudden onset blindness or blurry vision, color changes, double vision, vision changes, sudden onset. My vision has been getting worse for the past 10 years. That's not a stroke. It's all of a sudden you're sitting at your desk and you see two of everything or all of a sudden the color of everything changes. Um, sudden onset vision changes, that facial drooping. We saw those images, uh, the body weakness and the difficulty understanding or forming words. So difficulty forming words can be the inability to speak at all or just slurred speech. And the other part of that makes stroke, spotting a stroke a little tricky is that the stroke signs can come and go. You might have sudden onset vision changes and then a minute or two later, your vision goes back to normal. That can still be a stroke and still needs to be checked out emergently. It's still very serious. So any of these signs that's, that are sudden, unexplained, even if they come and go, and you only need one of them, can signify a stroke. So we're getting to the first objective, which is for you to recognize the signs of a stroke. I'm going to show you a video now of a woman called Stacy who did not know what you now know. She suffered a stroke and she had no idea what was happening to her. She had the stroke signs and she made the mistake of driving herself to her doctor's office. When she got to her doctor's office, the signs had stopped. She explained to her doctor what happened, what, what she experienced, and the doctor said, Stacy, you're stressed out. You need to rest. You need to breathe deeply if this happens again. You need to manage your stress. So she left her doctor's office, went to the parking lot, signs started up again. She takes out her phone. She videos herself having a stroke. She drives to another facility where the stroke is recognized and she gets treatment. Um, but she did not know what you now know, and, and we're going to see her experience here. My name is Stacy Jappas, and I Jeppes. suffered three strokes I from March 31st strokes. for three days in a row up till April 2nd. It's all tingly on the left side. On the left side. On the left side. On the left side. The doctor said to breathe in, breathe out, breathe manage in, distress. Breathe out, manage distress. And I'm trying. And I'm I trying. don't know why this is happening to me. I don't know me. why this is happening it to me. It happened this morning again. It happened this morning again. So now I'm taking a picture for an example so of what happened. So now I'm taking a picture happens. for an example of what happened. My tongue feels very numb. My tongue feels very numb. I just tried to take a drink or something. I just tried to take a drink or something. And I couldn't drink it very well. And I couldn't drink it very well. My name is Stacy Jappas, and I suffered so three Stacey, strokes from March 31st for three days in a row up till drooping. April 2nd. She also has slurred speech, and her arms are weak as well. Her left side so arm is weak. So she's um, having a couple side. of the signs, um, but again, um, the left you only side. need one sign. One of the things I get to do in this job is meet stroke survivors. And what they'll tell me is that if you've seen one stroke, you've seen one stroke. So the stroke signs can be different for every person. 
Some people have more than one stroke over a, a difference of maybe a couple of years or even a couple of days. Uh, and the two strokes that they have, or even three strokes that they have, can be very different. Again, going back to what a stroke is, it's blood flow interruption to the brain. So depending on what part of the brain is being deprived of that oxygen, you're going to see different signs. You only need one sign to signify a stroke. We're going to see another person, a Congressman Ron Paul, suffered a stroke during a live interview, and we're going to see what his stroke looked like. Liquidated. We have to get rid of that. That's a bird. We can barely wear this. We can't find it. We can't find it. We can't find Liquidated. We have to get rid of that. That's a bird. We can barely wear this. We can't find it. We can't find it. We can't find it. So with Congressman Paul, you can see his face starts to droop quite dramatically, the left eye and the left side of his mouth. And then the other stroke sign he's exhibiting here is just a sudden inability to form um, cohesive words. He's making sounds, but he's not been able to put those sounds together into a sentence or even into normal words. So I'm not talking about the kind of experience sometimes we have. The other day I was looking for a word. I couldn't think of the word croissant. And I'm describing um, French bread, uh, kind of a roll, um, breakfast, breakfast material. I couldn't think of the word croissant. That's not a stroke. It's just me not able to think of the word. I was able to put together uh, sentences yeah. describing what I was looking for, but I couldn't think of the word croissant. Like so we that's not a stroke. That. It's more what we saw with, we with Congressman Dr. Is. Ron Paul. The inability to form it. words yeah. um, going on as, as he did. So we talked about Congressman Paul's stroke signs, but it's important to recognize that not all patients who have strokes will present with any of the symptoms that either the last two people we saw. Again, going back to uh, Senator Ray Lujan's stroke where his signs were just that dizziness, the sudden onset dizziness. Again, if you've seen one stroke, you've seen one stroke. So we've talked about um, what the stroke signs are. That was our first objective. And now we're gonna get into the second objective, the need to call 911 immediately when you spot those signs. Time is brain. Every single minute during a stroke, two million brain cells die. As soon as the blood flow is interrupted to that brain tissue, immediately brain tissue begins to die. The best chance of a full recovery happens when stroke patients get to the hospital immediately after the signs begin. When we look at the data, depending on the study that we read, about 80% of patients arrive at the emergency room too late to receive the first line medication. There is a medication available for to treat strokes, but the FDA allows that medication to be administered only within about four hours after the stroke signs begin. If you arrive at the emergency room past that short window, you're not even eligible for the medication anymore. And what a lot of people don't know is that um, the hospital needs about an hour to do, to do their tests and their procedures to even get the medication on board, which means you have to arrive at the emergency room within about three hours to give the hospital time to do what they need to do. And when we look at the numbers and we look at the data, arriving within the first hour after signs begin really gives us the best chance of a full recovery. The best way to get to the the place you need to be for treatment is to call 911. One of the mistakes stroke patients make is they'll drive themselves to the emergency room. Remember, if you are having a stroke, you are suffering brain damage. Many times in my 20 years as a paramedic, I have been called to the scene of car crashes where the driver is unconscious and unresponsive. When I'm dealing with an unconscious, unresponsive patient, I cannot assess them for a stroke. I'm dealing with whatever trauma they've created. Strokes are not necessarily the first thing that I'm dealing with anymore. I can't even assess them for that. So they're not being treated maybe for the reason they were in the car crash in the first place. And they can't, they can't express what's going on anymore because of the car crash. So driving yourself to the hospital is dangerous for you. And it's dangerous for everyone else on the road and on the sidewalks, wherever you're going to be driving because you're suffering brain damage if you're having a stroke. 
Another mistake people will make is they will have a friend drive them to the hospital, which is wrong for a lot of reasons as well. Not every healthcare facility, not every emergency room can treat strokes. Larger hospitals are more likely to be able to treat strokes, but hospitals go through a rigorous certification procedure on a regular basis to be allowed to administer the powerful stroke medication to stroke patients. And if a friend drives you to a hospital that can't treat strokes, you're only wasting precious time. Paramedics know which hospitals can treat strokes and they will take you to the right facility. One of the first things I'm taught when I start as a paramedic in a new jurisdiction is which hospitals are the stroke hospitals. So paramedics will know that. So that's why it's also important not to have a friend drive you to the hospital. Another reason why it's important to call 911 is EMS can save you time. When I'm with a stroke patient, oftentimes before I've even left their driveway, so the patient's with me in the back of the ambulance, uh, I'm on the radio calling the emergency room, telling the emergency room that I have a stroke patient coming in. So as soon as the stroke, as soon as the hospital hears that a stroke patient is coming in via 911, that emergency room physician is activating the stroke team. They're pulling doctors and nurses from around the hospital who treat strokes. They're clearing out the CT scanner room so that you can go right to it to be tested and assessed immediately when you enter the room. So we're saving you 10, 15, 20 minutes off of that short, narrow window when we bring you in instead of having you or a friend drive you in and uh, you don't have to go through the registration process you're not being triaged we've done all that in a field we've diagnosed what we think is a stroke we're saving you time so calling 911 will save you time and brain because time is brain this is um, just a pie chart from one study but it's representative of several studies when we look at the data we see that only about a third of stroke patients arrive at the emergency room via 911. the other two-thirds come in a privately owned vehicle either themselves or a friend will drive them in of that small one-third who arrive via 911, only four percent of those patients call 911 for themselves so the purpose of this slide is to address the third objective. So we've talked about the first objective, recognizing the signs of a stroke. The second objective is the need to call 911 immediately. And now we're getting into the third objective, why it's important to teach this information to others. It's important to teach this information to others because it's great that you're listening to this presentation, but the chances are very small that if you suffer a stroke, you will call 911 for yourself. That just doesn't happen, statistically speaking. Statistically speaking, we see that it's other people who call 911 for the stroke patients. So for you to create the best, safest stroke environment for yourself, it's important for you to teach this information primarily to your family, anyone you live with or have a regular contact with, but then also a paid caregiver. And then coworkers are another big, big chunk of people who will end up calling 911 for stroke patients. So it's important to teach this information forward, teach it to someone else, those around you, for you to have the safest environment for yourself. The other thing we'd like to do to help you stay stroke smart is to give you memory aids. So with this training, you should get a stroke smart magnet and a wallet card. It's good that you're taking this training today, but you might not come into contact with someone in your life who's suffering a stroke, or you may not have a stroke for maybe six months or five years or 10 years from now. And the odds that you'll remember this training session are very small. But if you take the magnet or the wallet card that comes with the training and you put it where you'll see it regularly on your refrigerator, where you're looking at it nearly every day for the next five years, when you do come into contact with someone who's suffering a stroke, the hope is that the signs have been reinforced in your mind and that you will be more likely to recognize that stroke and to call 911 in order to stop that stroke. So it's important that you're here today, but it's more important that you stay stroke smart. And that's really the last part of this is the importance of teaching this forward. In order to stay stroke smart, one of the other things you can do is teach it forward. Teach those around you to recognize the signs of a stroke. You see on this slide, 
um, the Northern Virginia EMS Council website. There's a tab there called Stroke Smart. There's lots of information. You can find the slides from this presentation and a PowerPoint presentation. You can find an, a link to order Stroke Smart supplies. If you click on the QR code, you, you take a picture of that QR code. You can be connected to our website. Uh, so that you can get Stroke Smart help from us directly. So I hope that we've accomplished the three objectives of knowing what the stroke signs are, of feeling confident in the immediate need to call 911 when you spot a stroke, and the feeling of inspiration to teach this information forward. And that is the end of the training. Please email or um, email contact us at the website there if you need any help, and we're very happy to provide that. Thank you for your attention.